Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all my friends out there uh, who may be watching this on, on my blog. Uh, as you can see, I'm trying to change things up a little bit today. I'm going to try actually putting a video on my blog and, and see how that works. Um, so please feel free to leave comments, send thoughts, um, email me, let me know what you think. Uh, I'll be very interested to kind of see how this medium works on my blog um, versus the, the written word. Uh, hopefully I'll be as eloquent in a video content as I am when I've got the ability to, to take my time and put my pen to the paper uh, and then post it. Um, so, so we'll see. Uh, today I actually happen to be uh, near home. Uh, but, of course, as you can tell by the wonderful artwork uh, behind me, uh, I am in yet another hotel room. Um, but what I wanted to do today uh, was to share with everyone uh, an insight that came out of a project that Dr. Gia Sassone and myself have been working on called the My Ideal Patient Experience. Um, and so you may have heard or seen me tweet or, or read in one of my previous posts about this topic, but it's something that I formulated into the, the four T's. And so the, the T's actually represent uh, time, trust, transparency, and transitions. Uh, and so, you know, from a, a patient perspective, uh, globally, these were some common themes that, that we were hearing over and over again. And I find it very sort of interesting, and, and this has kind of been my wheelhouse and, and my focus uh, for the vast majority of my career. Um, but, you know, the, the first thing that, you know, came out of this was time. And I think if, if we all think about time, whether we're a patient or a family member or a physician or part of the care team, um, time is something that, that we can give. Um, but it's something that we can't always get back. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can never get time back. It's, you know, once we use it or decide where we're going to spend that time, it's gone. And so I think in healthcare, it's even more important uh, than in any place else in our lives um, about how we spend that time interacting and connecting with other people. And so, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be you know, 30 minutes or an hour, but even if it's just, you know, three or five minutes, um, when you're in front of a patient, uh, it's really about making sure that you connect with them, that, that you listen to them, that you understand sort of their story and, and why they're coming to you um, in a fashion that's uninterrupted. So, you know, leave all the bells, chimes, whistles, cell phones, uh, pings, dings, and, you know, other things um, on mute. Better, better yet, if you can, leave them outside the room so that the, the time that you do have face-to-face -face, uh, is really about connecting and, and spending quality time, not just any time, uh, with patients. Which really sort of transitions into the second one, which is about trust. And so, you know, if you think about spending quality time and, and being an active listener and forming a relationship between patients and care teams and, and providers, that that's how you build the trust. And once you build the trust, you've got this ability to be completely transparent, which gets into the, the third T. Um, about, you know, informed consent, about the outcomes, about what is the patient expectation, and how do you, as a member of the care team, ensure that you can deliver on those expectations? Or if those expectations aren't necessarily correct, how do you transparently share what the outcomes and, and what those expectations need to be based on sort of the current situation? Um, and that really gets into, you know, the fourth part is that once a decision is made, that you've spent the time, you've earned the trust, you've been transparent with all of the options, is how do you manage the transition? So, so now you've had the conversation, now you need to follow up, maybe you need to help coordinate care to another provider, or maybe it's an imaging exam, or, or maybe it's just a conversation with the rest of the care team to really understand what those expectations are and what's the, the ideal outcome in order to deliver on that. Um, 
but how do you do that in a, a way that's you know coordinated and simplified and easy from the patient's perspective so that they don't you know fall between the cracks and and get lost in this crazy fragmented healthcare system that that we all sort of live in and work in um, so again when we think of our patients and, and we think of our interactions you know try and always remember the four T's which is all about the time make sure that it's uninterrupted and it's quality time which will help you build the trust that you want in order to have a transparent and truthful conversation uh, which ultimately allows us all to to help manage the transitions for for our patients and our families so I hope all of you out there are having a great day uh, I look forward to doing more of these posts, and please feel free to leave me feedback either directly on my blog, uh, send me an email uh, to cancergeek at gmail.com, or you can always find me on Twitter uh, via social media at cancergeek. Thank you, and have a great day.